Thank you, thank you. Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome back to Anderson's TV and my special guest today. 
Richard Bonner, aka the Ninja. Yes. Um, let's get rid of this for now. We don't yeah. need this for the the rest of the interview. I don't think. Um, Wow, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Um, I know you're in London on a super whirlwind stop over at Ronnie Scott's tonight. Um, so we'll talk about that a bit later. You're here, obviously, uh, with our friends at Mark Base to yeah. talk about um, all the ninja, the ninja gear and the mm. Kilimanjaro base. But, I mean, you're such an interesting, stylistically interesting musician to listen to. So we have to talk about where that's come Absolutely. from yeah. um, and I know your roots are from Cameroon and, and, and then into to France uh, as a student and, and then all around the world as a musician but um, let's talk about growing up in Cameroon and, and, and you know where the, where the inspiration to play bass and, and your musical roots have come from. Yeah so I, I was born in, uh, in the east, east part of Cameroon in a very remote town, it's a small village uh, but uh, I was so lucky because I was surrounded by a lot of musicians in my own family with my grandfather, my mother, you know, so my surrounder was all, they were all musicians. So, you know, as you know, you take a kid, put him surrounded with musicians or surrounded with fishermen, they more, <laughs> they a bigger chance he's going to be a good fisherman. <laughs> yeah. So mine was, <laughs> I was just surrounded by, uh, my own chance was uh, being surrounded by, by musicians and having a grandfather would notice right away that music was my path because that was the the only thing that kind of cooled me off you know when i heard music i became nicer i became smooth I yeah when i was two three years old i was too much trouble you know and <laughs> and each time he took me to a rehearsal he said man this kid is so quiet at rehearsal he's like so focused and all those things because the music was getting into me you know and all the all the signs are Actually, we could see this at the preliminary stage when mm -hmm. a kid is, you know, because uh, we don't change. Right. We, we, we are, yeah. you know. So, uh, and uh, when they find it early, it's, it, it's better. So, yeah. in my case, they found it earlier. So, and, uh, and they, he built me a balafon. That was my first instrument. Balafon was actually my first instrument. What's a balafon? It's, uh, it's a marimba. It's a okay. traditional... Uh, in Central Africa, we yeah. call it a balafon. So he, he built me a balafon. That was my first instrument. Then I started to bang on this this thing. I mean, all day. I mean, it was like my <laughs> I banged on this thing so much. By the time I was five years old, they hired me into. Uh, I was I, I was part of a band. Amazing. And uh, a church, but it was a church, mm -hmm. you know, local church band, and playing ceremonies in the village and stuff. So that's how I grew up playing traditional music so yeah. the bass came in the picture way late yeah and uh so and out of a village i my father got a job as a truck driver in the city mm -hmm. uh it's not a capital but the second biggest city in cameron which uh the name is duala that's the name of the city and uh, we got there but what i realized when when i got into the big city uh nobody was playing uh traditional instruments so the balafon was kind of uh right. It didn't look good yeah. for a guy to play ballad from the city. So everybody was playing guitar, because mm -hmm. the guitar and stuff. So and then I figured, I'm like, wow, I'm not going to. I was already 13 years old. I'm like, I'm not going to start playing an instrument from zero. Right. I'm already like a master playing <laughs> ballad from. I'm talking, yeah. you know, people used to, people will work from village to village to come see me play. Wow. And, and my, you know, and my joint over there. So I'm in the city now, you know, ballad from doesn't look good. So... So what I did, I readapt everything I knew on the balafon and I transpose it into a guitar. Wow. Then I started to make the guitar sound really, uh, uh, really strange because I started yeah. to play the guitar a, a way where a lot of other kids were not playing the guitar. So I think that started to attract a lot of local singers to, to use me playing, you know, to, to, to be a backup musician for them. So I started to tour, with, you know, and playing and carrying places here. And... Uh, and later on came the bass, you know, because back then, and before that guitar, before I went to the city, I already played organ in the church too, okay. from the balafron, because, you know, it's kind of the same yeah. disposition and uh, stuff. So I played organ a little bit in the local church too, and, and uh, when we got to, to the city, and then you found, I discovered, I found the bass found by the bass. listening to uh, uh, Jaco's album, first album. 
Right. Yeah. I was going to say, who's who was the was there a definitive moment yeah. where you heard someone and went and I suppose, yeah, was uh, yeah be... it was Jacko was the first album uh, Portrait of Tracy. Right. Yeah. So then uh, what happened was I, I used to play in this you know top forties band mm -hmm. playing guitar and uh, doing my guitar playing and stuff you know. 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. every day, and stuff. So, and then came this French guy who was trying to open a jazz club. I heard a French guy was opening a jazz club, so he came to me and said, "Wow, too bad you guys don't play jazz music, because I'm trying to open a jazz music." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, never heard jazz before. This is what we do, you know. You know, we play, we play what we play, you know." Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, then he made me a big offer, you know. And he said, how much you getting paid here? And I was like, <laughs> back then I was getting paid about a dollar a night. And he said, if you play jazz, I will pay you $20 a night. Oh, man. I said, wow. I, I love this Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> jazz, that's, that's the, all I want to play I don't now. care what is this jazz or gas or military <laughs> music. I'm going to play this music. I told him, man, you Frenchman, come, come, come here, man. Talk to me again. 20? He said, 20? He said, yeah. Because by the time I was 13, man, I was a straight up gangster, man. <laughs> I said, come talk to me here, man, you know. 20, you serious? He said, yeah. You don't have to play 9 to 6. I will close around midnight. I said, I love this work. I love jazz music right now. So I went to his place. He had, he had a huge collection of LPs back then, you know. And, uh, and he's like, like about four or 500 LPs. Yeah. I'm like, this guy traveled with these things. Man, this, you know, some, some crazy dude. And he's like, pick one. I'm not, I'm a pick one. I don't, I don't know about in this, this this collection, man. You know, I said just pick one. And then I pick one. We put it on the on the turntable, and it was Portrait of Trace of Jacob Pistorius. Mm -hmm. And then I heard the bass like I never heard the bass before. And uh, wow! And I was like, wow! Play play me that tip again. Let's play it again. And he played the thing again. He said, you don't want to listen to another record? I said, no, 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 no. Hold on. Play this song again. And it was Donnelly. Right. Bass and percussion. And then uh, something came to my mind, and I'm like, man, either this guy, the two possibilities. <laughs> Look at the 13 years old Richard <laughs> Bonner now. I'm like, man, dude, there's two possibilities. Either this guy's just playing any note like. It's, or he's just playing any note, or if he knows what he's playing, then this is a bad motherfucker. Command. <laughs> and uh, so I heard all those lines. I'm like, wow, okay, play it again. He said, what, you don't want to listen to something else? I said, no, 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 no. Play me this tape again. And I said, man, maybe it's running fast. He said, no, that's the right speed. I said, oh, now we have a problem. And then, but I was a kid that loved challenge. I'm still that same kid okay. today. Yeah, I love challenge. I love to challenge myself, you know. If I love something, I don't care where it's from. I'm going to play it, you know, because I, I just want to feel good. That's what it's all about, you know. That's what it's all about. And then I started to play it, and uh, two days later, my guitar that used to have six strings, and I had four strings. <laughs> I went to my gig, I got fired. Because <laughs> the, the band leader was like, what is this? Is, he said, I said, this is my new guitar. He said, okay, well, you're fired. <laughs> so and then I went on, just started to play the thing, and finally the guy hired me, and I was on the bass now. I wasn't on the guitar anymore. So when you're young, I transitioned so many times from, from this instrument to this one, from this one to this one. At some point, you know, I heard Ben Webster and I pick up a saxophone, and I just started to practice. I wasn't touching even the bass anymore, but that lasts like six months because uh, I couldn't I couldn't fix my saxophone. So I was just like, <laughs> okay, it was so hard to fix the saxophone. I went back again on the bass. I said, well, you know, I can't. So, and was know. the was the, the the French connection there? Was that what ultimately led to you going to Paris, or was that a different? Um... Yeah, the French connections, because my country's actually, you know, we we are French. Uh, uh, Spoken country, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was easier to to, to start uh, 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 by going to France. So, and, did you uh, feel like you went from being like a big fish in your local town to yeah. to being like you know somebody like big, you know bigger yeah, scene? And, definitely, and Paris is uh, you know that's where a lot of our local artists you know 
used to record making their own records and uh, everything was production everything was made in France mm. basically you know and uh, so we felt like you know that was the place to be and then when I got to France I, I actually didn't like it okay. I, I didn't like it because uh, I don't know I, I, I just I just love to play man you know I play all the times so I felt like in France it was like everything was like people taking times to develop things you have an idea Man, and I was like, man, let me, let me try something else. You know, I went to New York for two weeks. I told my sister, you know what? Let me try New York. Because already, by, you know, I used to play with local artists. And every time I met guys like Mike Stern, the festival and stuff, they always like, man, you got to come to New York, man. Mm. You got to, you know, your vibe is so New York. Your vibe is so New York, man. You got to come to New York. And I was like, you know what? Let me try. I told my sister, I'm going to go there two weeks and see what's up, you know. And uh, I got to New York three days after I called my sister. I said, listen, I'm not coming back. <laughs> this is it. This is where it's at. This is where yeah. I belong. I belong here. And what era, what, 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 when, when are we talking about? 1995. Right. June 17, when I arrived in New York. Because we, we had a similar, although I think it was a little earlier than that, Marcus Miller was saying the set, like New York was just... That was Insane. it. I got to New York um, three days later. Mm. I mean, I landed in New York. I had $420 in the pocket, you know, with my base. That was it, with my backpack. I got there. I tell you, three days after, I was like, wow, this is it. So this who did is you my meet? Town. Who, who did you meet and what kind of uh, doors opened for you when you got to New York? I got to New York and uh, two days after, I get to a payphone in the street. I take 25 cents. And I'm like, man, I remember Joe Zawinul. I played with Joe once in France. Okay. He invited me on stage because he heard, heard me play on the table, on the cassette somewhere. And he calls me. The guy calls me around like 6 p.m. He's like, yeah, can you come here? I'm doing a show here. I'm like, dude, for real? So I went there. And I'm Joe Zawinul. So we did a show, you know, you know improvise. He, yeah. he invited me in Paris. He said, like, man, whenever you come to New York, call me. Then two days after, when I arrived in New York, years after, and uh, I'm, I'm on the payphone, and I put 25 cents, and I called Joe. And he, he picks up the phone. Check this thing out. He picks up the phone. Like three years after, he gave me his phone number. And he goes like, Richard Bonner. And I was like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> This is man, I don't like New York now, man. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I got some fucking ghosts around wow. here, what? In the street. And I'm like, I look around, I say, wow, you see, yeah, that's me. Are you are you around? I say, no, nah. I say, man. He said, you in New York, right? I say, yeah. He said, come see me. You wanna go on the road? I'm like, yeah, but this this sound kind of that's fishy. Weird. I mean, yeah. So two days uh, not the day after, I went to see him uh, uh, two days after the, f the phone call at his place, and I called him from a 9th Street corner. Check this thing out, from a 9th Street corner. Go home, he sent me his address. He lives on the 12th Street corner, three blocks away from where <laughs> I call him. I never had his address before. It's crazy. So I go to his place. Now in my mind, I have one question. I'm like, how do you, how do you know that was me? This is a fucking mm. pay phone in the street, okay? There are many pay phones in New York City, thousands of them. So I ask him, Joe, I have a question. How do you know that was me? And he's going walking, he's like, who else will call me from a pay phone? <laughs> <laughs> That is amazing. I'm like, I'm like okay. Yeah, you know, we fair. went on the road. So I just left Europe like 13 days ago. And I'm flying back to Europe to do a tour with Joe Zaun. Oh, man. And crazy. And uh, so that's how New York started for me. And then uh, a few months after, I got hired as a musical director for Harry Belafonte. Wow. So that was good. And I started to play with, you know, the whole kind of you know, local scene. Randy Brecker, Mike Stern, Bill Evans, you know, steps ahead and uh, 
you know, all the bands that I used to kind of... Uh, I see, it's crazy. I mean, listening so much and stuff, you know. Tell me about that kind of... Did your improvisational skills... Because it feels to me that those kind of bands and those kind of artists would have just got together and there'd have been this crazy energy and music would have happened rather than, you know, going, here's the score, please, can you just play this? What, what, what was it like? Uh, first of all, for, with, with all of these bands, I knew all of their repertoire right. to start with. So when, when uh, Steps Ahead calls me, uh, when Mike Neary gets in, gets in touch with me, I already know that I know the book. Okay. Right. It's not like it's not like we. <laughs> it's not like when Joe calls me, man. I know everything about Joe. I, he actually lost a bet with me once. We were on the road in Italy, and we trying to play uh, Black Market, you know, and uh, uh, from Weather Report's album. I don't know somehow Joe hasn't played this music for a long time, so. This is, I grew up playing, I, I grew mm. up playing, I grew up learning my, uh, uh, how to play by listening to this music. So, man, I know this music. That's great. Nobody in a weather report band can compete with me. When he <laughs> <comes>. <laughs> so he said, no, I think, listen, man, I wrote this thing it's three times. I said, Joe, nope, two times. He said, now, and he's going like, oh, now you're going to, I said, Joe, I don't, it's three times. And then he asked Ivan to play the tape, and we bet about five hundred dollars. <laughs> As the thing was playing, I was just like, "No, please don't even <laughs> just start counting my five euros here, man. Don't even bet." The thing went on two times, and he, you could see Joe. He was like, "Okay." <laughs> no, I mean, because they wrote the stuff, but uh, we grew up studying mm. it's different mm. you write something and you leave it you play time to time but the kids back there that was playing it five thousand times just to go like no no we learn this yeah. thing like note by note and play it so many times that it's it's almost like printed in our brains so yeah and uh I had that with Josh Benson in the studio once. Josh Benson recording studio where uh, one of his solo, and I sang all of his solo. I just sang it like this. He said, how do you remember that, man? I said, man, Josh, this is how I, and this is how I started guitar. <laughs> I started guitar by going, that's how we learn how to play the thing. We, that was our book. Man, I played this thing three million times. I'm talking. I can hear that. I mean, I was going to ask you about how you felt your own style developed because obviously as a as a young player you're drawing in all these influences yeah. but when i hear you now I, I i don't you know i hear your uniqueness rather than you know it's not just trying to play something yeah else. So where, i started to combine that... i started yeah. kind of combine all the stuff with my own background mm -hmm. that's what i did I, I didn't go there trying to recreate something new no that would be a lie i didn't mm. i didn't i just i just took what was my my traditional background yeah and I uh, started to add all these little elements that I got from uh, people that I, I study and people that I, I, I was listening to. You know, when you see me playing. It's almost like you've got your guitar background coming in. Yeah, you with know, the balafon and everything, yeah, the yeah. muting, my yeah. original, because I used to play uh, uh, the balafon with with two sticks, yeah, you know. So and I would take this two. This becomes the two sticks, and uh, cool. and mute here because the balafon is a kind of little muted instrument yeah. compared to a guitar. Then I would mute here and I would do. It's because that you so, can hear the African influence there. You can hear that definitely. African kind of influence. There. And I could add yeah. vocal to it. And then I yeah. started to add my other yeah. uh, vocal part to it and, and stuff. So to create now the Richard yeah. Bonner yeah. Uh, 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 part, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Ma pula ni yo el agua es erica con Ma la tiende a baña y de ahí en la mona Hoy ma pula no lo mamá son con piña piña en la dao What is Ma la tiende a la mona y de ahí en la mona <laughs> so, uh, and what are you? What are you? When you're singing, yeah, um, are you are you singing uh, sort of you know native French kind of words, or are you just making va sounds and just what? what I what make up. I, just, I make up my own sounds. Just making you know, your own most sounds. Most of the time, that's the good thing about you know because I play so many instruments that yeah. now I, I I can simulate any kind of instrument and it yeah. comes out like people are like, well, what are you saying? But I'm not saying anything. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying anything. You kind of are. I'm thinking of a soprano saxophone, for right. example, now, in my, in my mind, you know. Yeah. The George Benson thing was mad, because yeah. as you were doing all that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, I'm imagining myself being one shorter. I have a shirt in my mouth, so mm -hmm. I, I just go and throw those notes out there. You've got good range as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I have a good range. <laughs> I'm lucky to have a very good range, so I could I could play around my voice. I could, you know. That's amazing. It doesn't have to be like lyrics or something, you know. I just throw my own syllables there and they become lyrics, you know. That's very cool. Yeah. I mean, Obviously, you're, you, you've played with some of the, you know, biggest, you've played with some incredible artists over in, in your career. Um, are you most comfortable doing your own thing and being the guy in the middle of the stage, or do you still like to be the bass player in, in someone else's I love setup? to I love to do my stuff, but... Uh... I just don't like doing the same thing all the times. Yeah. So I can't be a good uh, like sideman who will stay. I'm not going to stay in the same band for two years or three years. Right. I had some good runs where you know I would do steps ahead. I did it for a year, and then go do something else. Uh, I did with Pat Martini Group. I did like two years there, and I move on and do some else. Even with my own music. Yeah. I don't like to play. You know that's why. I, you know, people see me with my band, and then next year I'm gonna get I get to tour with something else. I, it's just keep it fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain. Yeah. yeah. You know, for my own little, <laughs> you know, well, I, mean, I don't know how to describe it. I just cannot play the same thing. But I respect people that could do that. I mean, yeah. it's fantastic. I I saw Ray Charles like two times in the space of like 25 years. He was playing the same repertoire, but it sounds fantastic. Yeah. It's beautiful. You know. I don't know if I could do that. Mm. Honestly, I, I I just don't know I could. What what could was the that. um? Do you have a sort of a moment in your in your whole musical journey where you just you were in a room with a bunch of other people and it was just I don't know some something magical, crazy, out the ordinary happened. Um, you know, just something that I don't know you'll never ever forget as a kind of a, a musical memory. Or are there just hundreds of them? When I saw Paco de Lucia. Right, solo, and I had to sit like I had to sit like seven feet away from him. Wow, <laughs> that was like till today. I was like, I was just like, whoa, okay. I'm gonna that's, go, that's yeah. I mean, I'm that... gonna set my base tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Find myself a new job. <laughs> wow, really? really? It, it yeah, freaks you out that much? yeah. Africa, man. Africa, man. I was like, I never listened to flamenco music. Mm. So now I've been doing flamenco playing, you know, with this flamenco project and stuff. But like I said, as a kid, I always had that, you know, I love to challenge myself. Not really, it's not a challenge just to, it's a pleasure actually. Yeah. I, want, I want to learn some about this thing because music, I, I feel like music is a school that never ends, you know. And I think we all should consider that, you know, that uh, music is a beautiful it's amazing, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing platform, you know. The more you know, less you know. <laughs> you know, I, that's how I always feel. It's, you know, I feel that way, you know. I'm like playing in New York with everybody, blah, blah, blah. And I traveled to India my first time. Huh? 
and they take me to this. They just like a private party. Of course, the top musicians, top local musicians yeah. are playing. And this is my first time in India, and I'm like, and they're like, you want to jam? I said, jam what? Yeah. <laughs> you, need, you need a fretless bass for that, don't I you? Need a it's like... bass. I need a fretless bass. No, not only fretless. <laughs> I need, you, you need to recalibrate. Yeah. <laughs> I need to recalibrate everything here. What the hell is this, you know? Who so oh, I'm trying to think now what another guest that I had that was talking about again doing... <laughs> Oh, it was a it was a guy called Phil Palmer, a guitar player that had done some Indian stuff, and again, just sent the the. There's no sense of a, a written time signature over man, there. Everything is just the first this like vibey It took me a while, thing. man. Yeah, yeah, it took me a while, and I started to go like, wow, okay, this is another. And then you get to realize that music is like, man, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like an ocean, you know. <laughs> you get a glass of water, you think, oh, I'm not thirsty anymore. That's it. I'm good. And then. I'm like, look what left out there, man. You want to drink that? Yeah. That's a lot of water, and that's only the top. But <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I could talk like this all day, but I'm conscious you've got to get to your Ronnie Scott's gig. So let's talk about uh, your Mark Bass relationship. Um, and how did you meet Marco, and, and what is it about the, the gear? that? Because you, you, you've made amps with him, you've made a bass yeah. with him. Um, tell us about that. Uh, first of all, it's been a beautiful, wonderful collaboration with uh, with uh, with Marco, and uh, finally I found somebody who was, who was gonna, you know, who, who were like a, 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 a brother listening to what I wanted to, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm crazy, man. You know, I always come <laughs> up with something. I want this. I, I had him on the phone again <laughs> the other day. I was talking about uh, 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 straps and uh, gig bags. And he was like, man, where do you get that idea? I said, yeah, I want a gig bag that, no, that's a, I want to talk about it, the new gig bag I'm, I'm developing now. Oh, it's top secret. Okay. It's top secret. <laughs> yeah, he's like, wow, okay, we'll, we'll try to make it. You know, I, I'm going to get somebody to, to try to simulate that. That's Marco right there. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's no borders, there's no uh, 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 a wall there with him. You know, whatever you bring as an idea, good or bad idea, he's gonna try to make it happen yeah you know and so this was the first product we developed there mm -hmm. the little mark ninja and then uh we went on we did this one we did the combo too we have a combo mm -hmm. and uh and we discussed about the bass it sound wise is it, is it a is it about headroom and dynamics or is there a certain uh, what's the sort of tonality that you felt drew you towards that Amplifying. I wanted to, you know, because I came out playing Fender, mm -hmm. full string. Then I trans I, 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 my transitions going for there. I played with Fodera for 20, 21 years. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to come up with something in the middle of both bases. Yeah. But something at a very affordable price. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and something light, yeah. Uh, something that suits me, and that's where you see all this cut and stuff and uh, design. It took a little while, and uh, we came with this beautiful tone, yeah, really beautiful tone. Beautiful. So, the, and is the idea versatility is the thing that you really want? Just yeah. any sound that you want. Any sound, and uh, you know, the passive side of it is just amazing too. It's, you know, you could do anything. <coughs> I'm going blues. 
I say, God, really, the uncle people. So, you know. You, you can't help yourself, can you? You just got so much music in you that just wants to just come out. It's yeah, just... man, I do, it my, I do it alone in my room all day. That's what I do, you know. I play, man, you know. I, uh, yeah. It's beautiful. I just love playing, you know. It's, and with Mark Bass, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful combo what we have. At the, and not only with me, you know, dynamic that we have at the Mark. We have many other bass players, you know, Jeff Berlin, uh, Marcus Miller, mm -hmm. you know, Mark King. Mm -hmm. And they all signed at Mark Bass. And uh, it's not a coincidence because uh, all that because of uh, uh, Marco being Marco. You yeah. know, he's unique. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. What's the... Um Kilimanjaro connection then have you climbed it or just it's just an interesting climb <laughs> oh yeah I climbed the Kilimanjaro you know <laughs> I just wonder what it because uh, that's no, I, this my to... geography it's in, that's in Kenya right is it yeah or, yeah so it's just a because it's an the, iconic African yeah, kind of yeah the highest peak yeah the highest peak I in Africa see. that's what it's, yeah so yeah, this is the highest peak this is the highest to. peak baby and, I get it uh, I thought of Kilimanjaro <laughs> <laughs> and I and I put my African map right here, you know, like golden African map right here. You know, I love this base. It's, it's a great looking base. Yeah. It's a great looking base, man. Uh, if people want to know more about your music, I mean, obviously the, the, you're at Ronnie Scott's tonight, but by yes. the time this video goes out, you, you'll have missed that. But I hope if anyone was watching this that was there, I hope it was a good gig. I don't think there's a better venue in England for that type of... Um, you know, jazz kind of yeah. style. It's an amazing place. But what else is happening? What you know, tours wise and music wise? What it, what is the uh, Richard Bonner diary look like for the uh, next six months? The next six months, I've been mostly on the road. I'm thinking about you know, the, uh, with this pandemic and uh, so many restrictions these days. Yeah. Yeah, it's so much changes. So you need to kind of always readapt or you know, change your stuff, adapt your stuff to whatever is happening, you know? Yeah. So right now I'm finishing this three months too and go home. I'm planning to write some new, uh, you know, a new album. And I don't know if I'm going to record it live or in a studio or just do it straight from home because I have a home studio. Or go back on the road, depending on what's going to happen, mm -hmm. you know? Like uh, I'm coming back in London again. Cool. In February at the cool. Jazz Cafe. I got Another two nights menu. there, so. And uh, I take it day by day. I'm gonna take it day by day Nothing and still that, playing man. every day and practicing and uh, loving it, you know. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Well, look, good luck tonight. Thank it's you. It's been an absolute pleasure Thanks meeting so you. Much. Thanks so no, much. Thank you so much for coming around. Thank you, Mark Bass, for, for arranging this. So, um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, massive round of applause. Richard Bonner. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, you see, look at this. Perfect. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>